hey guys welcome back to my channel okay so today i'm going to be making french toast let's hop right in so these are the things that you're going to be needing you're going to need milk sugar eggs in a bowl to mix the mixture in butter cinnamon nutmeg and vanilla i use any kind of vanilla i used to um well i don't use imitation i don't like the way imitation tastes but I use regular, but you can use imitation. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to be cooking on this little griddle that I've had for some time. Um, you can cook it in your cast iron or you can cook it on your skillet um, if you have a skillet. But to me, the griddle is faster. I can cook more than one at a time. Okay, so I've got my stainless steel racks out because this is where I'm going to be sitting my French toast when it's done cooking. And this is so that... I don't know if anybody's ever cooked French toast, but sometimes when you put them on top of each other, the heat can kind of make them collapse and make them a little soggy. So I um I, I always like to put mine on the rack. Okay, so you're going to use a cup of milk. This is the mixture. Um, Now with the mixture, the sugar is optional, but I still do it because it makes it a little more sweeter. So you're going to do a cup of milk, two large eggs. And depending on the amount of people you're feeding, you can do two cups of milk and four large eggs. Um, I eyeballed this, but you could do a tablespoon of cinnamon. I'm going to say do a tablespoon and a half because I like mine coated with cinnamon. After so many dips, you know what I mean? Your French toast don't really get that much cinnamon on it once it starts to dwindle down. But I like all my French toast to be nice and cinnamony. So I put a, a teaspoon and a half. And then you can go ahead and put the nutmeg. I would say you put a tea, a te I'm sorry, a tablespoon and a half. And a teaspoon of nutmeg. Because depending on how much you like the taste of nutmeg. Okay, no, and I want people to remember. Nutmeg and cinnamon are spices. You cannot put too much because the taste will be overwhelming. Okay. And then I eyeballed this. But you can do about a tablespoon of sugar. You don't want to put too much sugar. Because the mixture already with the cinnamon and the vanilla is going to taste really good. And then I do a teaspoon of vanilla in there, which I also did eyeball. And then you just want to mix it up. You want to mix it real good. Um, I know so I know a few people who don't mix their eggs completely, but I like my eggs to be mixed completely. Um, because I don't like that egg the egg on the on the top of my French toast. The egg, in my opinion, is mainly for the color. It makes it really nice and brown looking, cinnamony. So I like to mix it up real, real good. And that's how it should look. And it'll bubble a little bit on the top. Um, but that's fine. That's what it's going to do. The eggs make it bubble a little bit. And that's how your mixture should look. Okay, so let's hop in. I've got two kinds of toast. Because my sons and my husband like different kind of bread. And I like a different kind of bread. I like Texas toast. That's brioche. That I'm pointing to right now. You can see it's a little thinner than Texas toast. I'm sorry. That's my baby. Okay. So, yeah, I got the Texas toast and the brioche. As you can see, brioche is a little bit thicker than Texas toast. I mean, I'm sorry, a little bit thinner. So, right now, what I'm cooking is a Texas toast. You can see because it's a lot thicker. So, what you want to do is you want to just dip your bread in the mixture. You don't want to dip it too much. Like, you don't want to suffocate it. You know, you just want to dip it in there real good, get it coated up real nice. Don't make the milk too heavy because, see, what's going to happen is your French toast is going to be soggy um, in the middle or on the on the inside and you don't want soggy french toast okay thank you put in the sink okay so you can see me here please okay and see this is what i was talking about that's why i like that griddle see that was about four french toast i think i'm about i'm gonna have about eight french toast on there so this cooks in no time and you want to have your i know you can see the smoke coming from my griddle you want to have your um griddle or your pan pot or skillet on high heat you want to have i'm sorry on medium you want to have on medium heat medium to high heat and that's because what's going to happen is while you're cooking the french toast the milk that you dipped it in it's going to that's what that smoke you're going to see it kind of evaporating a little bit which is basically cooking the french toast and giving it this nice i don't want to say crunchy 
with this nice um textured Remember. exterior. It's going to give it this nice textured exterior. Okay, and the reason why I say don't dip your French toast too much also is because if you're one of those people who are like a perfectionist, you're going to be flipping that thing, flipping it and flipping it and flipping it until you've decided that, okay, it's not mushy anymore. And you don't want to do that because ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to end up burning it and you don't want to burn it. So you want to have it on medium heat. And kind of just let them cook down like that. And you see, they look so delicious right now, just sitting there soaked up. I love how the mixture give it that yellowish kind of look. That's my favorite thing about French toast is the way it looks when it's done cooking because it just looks so delicious. And I don't want to brag on myself, but you can eat my French toast without syrup, honey. That's how good it is. Okay, that's that sugar in that mixture. Give it that bump okay they give it that bump of extra sweetness and i don't usually like syrup and things too much like even when i make my pancakes i don't down i don't drown them in syrup too much because they're so good you can have them without syrup i like to make my pancakes with butter i know some people like butter some people use olive oil and that's how i also make my french toast i use a heaping amount of butter because i do not butter my french toast at the end because there's so much i put so much butter on my skillet that they're all they're nice and buttery so that's the french toast what they look like when they're done as you can see they're still nice and thick and fluffy yay okay so this is the brioche okay the brioche bread broche i don't know i don't know how you say it broche brioche people call it different things i'm gonna just say it how i know how to say it baby i'm from the south we say it how we want okay so broche brioche bread um in my opinion cooks easier because it's not so thick if you're looking for an easy quick fast dinner you don't want to make no mistakes you got family coming over they got them you got them judging you baby get that brioche okay because texas toast is how you run it all right texas toast is delicious it's thick but brioche takes no time to cook you don't have to worry about i mean unless you really just was dipping it in there and you left it sitting for a couple you don't really have to worry about brioche or brioche bread um getting too soggy on you so you see okay I want to make this clear because of my because of my um my skillet is so old some the heat ranges from one side to the middle to the others that's why you see the one in the middle has cooked faster than the two on the side even though they were put there at the same time okay so I also want to um reiterate that so you want to make sure that you're cooking all your French toast thoroughly all the way through. And let me explain how you know when it's cooked all the way through. It's kind of hard to explain too, but I'm going to try my best. Okay, so if you touch your French toast with your spatula, you should be able to feel like a little mushiness to it. And that means it's not done yet. So you want to leave it or if it's done on the side that you've flipped, you want to flip it over. And then when it's done... What you'll do is you'll feel, it'll feel, it'll feel nice and firm. That's the best way I can explain it. It'll feel firm. It won't feel flimsy. You won't be, you know, it won't be all over the place. Lord, that French toast gave me the hardest time. I was about to beat it up, y'all. Y'all just don't know that French toast going to get a knuckle sound. Okay. So, but yeah, um, so you'll feel it. It'll be like firm. You know what I mean? It'll be firm. It won't be um, mushy or anything like that. And that's how you want your French toast. Okay, so look at that. Wow. Nice and fluffy. Look at that bounce back. Boom. That's how you know it's done. That right there. If you got, if your French toast is kind of flimsy and it's not bouncing back, it probably is not done on the inside. Okay. Now, I'm not going to lie. Some French toast is going to have some wetness to it. That's a little bit normal. Okay. But if yours is like super duper wet, it's not done. But this is basically how you make French toast. And